If I could communicate to Yang Song, I would just say that your work is real work. Your work is valuable. Your work is not criminal. The night that Song Yang was killed, another one of her colleagues also attempted to escape the building by jumping out the back window, resulting in a crippling back injury that forced her to return to China for medical treatment. Yet another colleague hid on the fire escape all night, shivering in the cold until morning for fear of encountering the police. How can help and rescue be delivered in the form of handcuffs? Since 2013, when Yang Song first moved to Flushing, Queens, she had tried to find other kinds of work. But as a Chinese-speaking migrant who didn't have access to full documentation, she began working uh, in the massage parlor in Flushing on 40th Road. Yang Song was more willing to jump out the window and maybe survive than to be in any kind of interface with NYPD. That's how traumatized she was by her experiences with NYPD criminalizing her only form of labor. Leading up to her murder, Yang Song suffered months of serial harassment and rape by police who tried to force her to act as an informant against other workers. A few weeks ago, her brother asked me why, in a democracy, why we cannot get a serious, independent investigation of her killing, why she was stalked and persecuted for her survival. Um, I got a text message just, a, I believe, a day or so after she died in the hospital. And that began a very rapid fire, um, quickly put together coalition response. And um, Yang Song was 38 years old, um, and I would say murdered by the NYPD. She worked in a massage parlor in Flushing, Queens. To support her ailing husband. To support her ailing husband. Her dream. Her dream. Was to save enough money. Was to save enough money to buy her parents a home. To buy her parents a home. She was in regular contact with her family in China, sending care packages caring for her elder husband in Flushing. In 2017 was an arrest that she uh, experienced during a raid. And that was when her regular communication with her family started to shift. Hello, i Lidal I'm Kate Zen, and um, I am an organizer with Red Canary Song. Red Canary is part of a bigger coalition effort um, called Decrim New York to pass um, a comprehensive bill that will decriminalize sex work in New York State. And um, we formed around uh, a vigil for uh, Song Yang, who passed away in November of 2017. So we've been trying to support her family in the case. Um, and we've been trying to fight for uh, legislation on the city level. We organize for public education and political action to bring awareness to migrant workers' rights in New York. We advocate for decriminalization and destigmatization of all sex work, massage work, and migrant labor. Red Canary is a group of Asian, Asian migrant, Asian American sex workers, allies, community organizers, community leaders, representatives, who are wanting to 
support grassroots organizing of massage parlor workers in Queens. One, two, three. And next week we're going to be starting the first drop-in um, centers for uh, with legal aid for migrant massage parlor workers. Something that needs to be said. There is a big difference between human labor trafficking and migrant massage parlor work. It's difficult to get people to identify themselves as sex workers because they're primarily massage workers. Um, and they may be offering a type of sex work, a sexual service, on top. Uh, so organizing with massage workers means recognizing that people may not, you know, may not ascribe to the identity of sex worker. Um, they may not even, some people may not realize that a hand job is treated as uh, sexual labor, right? They may think of that as being something that is so different from full service sexual work, they wouldn't think of it as prostitution. And so um, there are many myths around what massage work is. Um, people often in the media tend to think, one, that everybody has been trafficked and that everyone's working against their will. And two, that everyone in these massage parlors are being forced to have full sex with their clients. Uh, both of these assumptions are false. I think we have to empathize with her because what she did was provide care and service of touch to other migrant labor communities. The majority of people who go to massage parlors in Flushing are Latino, like Latino construction workers. These are the small spaces of care for a lot of immigrants um, who don't have workers, like working rights, whether they are construction workers or migrant sex workers. And so for these sex workers, they have more in common with their clients than they do with the people who are trying to save them. Police are not often a good way to um, help people exit trafficking situations because trafficking victims get arrested all the time, not just for prostitution, but also for larceny, robbery, trespass, drugs, all kinds of charges. Increased criminal legal system involvement, including police, including open cases, is always bad for people in the sex trades, especially black and Latino trans women of color who are literally constantly being policed every day. Like you can get a walking while trans um, arrest just for walking around, right? So how do you avoid criminal legal system contact for six months? If you have more contact, or if you miss a court date, or if you miss service, then that that case stays open, and you may get a criminal record, and also that's going to impact all of your housing and employment as well. And we know, as shared earlier, when people don't have many options, they're also going to go back to the sex trades to survive. So it really is a cycle of increased criminalization. And so I want to bring back to the idea of, like, how do you actually, like, help people who've been trafficked. Um, the same way as you work with like domestic workers, work with construction workers, um, work with like nail salon workers, you need to focus on workers' rights and you need to focus on immigration and, and the problems of immigration rather than using the blunt tool of criminalization as, as the strategy. What I recommend is reaching out to one of the organizations that does anti-trafficking work. I think a really good organization is Womankind in New York City. We believe in really supporting the survivors and their truths um, in whatever profession that they um, are doing, whether it's by circumstance or choice. And a lot of the individuals that we support um, are trading sex out of circumstance. And if they make the decision to uh, to not be in the sex trades anymore, then we are there to support that. Um, if not, we are there to support um, their decision to trade sex. If you have never had any friends who were sex workers, you were never in contact with any sex workers, you've never gone to seek their services, you just literally have no relation to sex workers except for what you've seen in media, I would ask yourself, what is your experience of your own sexuality? Everyone is impacted by sex work in their own experience of their sexuality. with a moment of silence for Yang Song. My sister, our comrade, rest in peace and power. We will never stop fighting for you.